Welcome to another episode of How to Implement. As promised, the episode on the Chengdu J10. I've finally flown the Vigan for a good bit and got a grip on how canard deltas fly in War Thunder. The Chinese tech tree has been a very controversial one over how it was implemented, as seen on my video titled Chinese Community Problem, a link to which will appear in the description and on the upper right hand part of the screen. But I hope that the J10 we will discuss today will start to excite more people for the Chinese tech tree. I also do hope that Gaijin does their utmost care for the Chinese tree. While the tree was not well executed in the early tiers, it can still be salvaged by having a good payoff at the end tiers. Without further ado, the Chengdu J10. The Chengdu J10 traces its origins to the next generation fighter proposal for the PLAAF in 1981. Three participating aircraft design institutes submit their design proposals, with Shenyang going for more conventional straight wing design, Hongdu going for a variable geometry design similar to the variable sweep flogger in Fencer of the USSR. Chengdu took inspiration from the Saab 37 Vigan and designed a canard delta wing based off the cancelled J9. Chengdu won the contest and the J10 began construction. In 1983, the choice of power plant, the Shenyang WS-10, was chosen for development. Although from 1984 onwards, the interest in the new fighter waned until at least the Gulf War, where it would regain funding and interest snowballing until the aircraft went into service. The technological capability of the J-10 paralleled the technological advancement in the aviation industry. Now that China entered a new age of computer-aided designs and computational fluid simulations, the Chengdu reflected this by being made 60% of new technologies. Although the WS-10 would not be used until the later batches of the J-10B, the J-10 was powered by the Saturn AL-31FN engine, most notably used in the Su-27 and Shenyang J-11. A huge part of the avionics of the J-10 was obtained from Israel with the technology from their failed IAI Lavi project. There are two variants that could be added in line with the previous videos I made since they are both of comparable com capability. The two variants would be the J10A and the J10B. The J10A, as the alphabetical designation suggests, is the earlier variant. The J10A with a Type 1473G pulse Doppler radar and Saturn AL31F engine outputting 124 kN of thrust at 1.05 TWR. It had the KJDC-01A targeting pod for guided ordnance. The J-10 also had a helmet-mounted device in a glass cockpit design. While it was a canard delta wing design like the Vigan, it differed from the Vigan by having its inlet duct underneath the fuselage, similar to the F-16, and attaching the canard directly to the fuselage. The J-10B differs from the J-10A by incorporating an IRST bolt in the nose cone near the canopy. Aside from IRST, the J-10B also replaces the Pulse Doppler radar with a passive electronically scanned array of unknown designation. It allows it to fire radar missiles more effectively. The AL-31FN engine becomes a Saturn AL-31FN Series 3 for the earlier batches and the WS-10B for the final batch of J-10Bs. The AL-31FN Series 3 is more powerful than the AL-31FN at 134 kN. Information of the exact thrust of the WS-10B is sparse, but is rumored to be more powerful than the AL-31FN Series 3. For reference, the Saturn AL-31FN is weaker than the F-16 Block 50's F-110 GE-129 by 7 kN, but the Series 3 is stronger than the F-110 GE-129 by 3 kN. More or less, the J-10s are toe-to-toe -to -toe with later F-16 in terms of engine power. J-10B also incorporated an HMD similar to the F-16. Both variants would mount countermeasures. As the Chengdu J-10 occupied the same function as the F-16 in the PLAAF with the J-11 occupying the F-15's role, the J-10 contains a wide selection of ordnance for all types of missions. Being Canard Deltas in my experience, these aircraft would have impeccable turning capability. Paired with the Saturn AL-31FN, the J-10A would have a comparable acceleration to the Vigan, although it would be so heavy due to a staggering amount of hardpoints, numbering at 11. 
this jet will struggle to dogfight with a full tank and full mission payload. Smart pilots would minimize carrying ordnance on the aircraft to maximize its maneuverability, especially with canard deltas that rely on high energy to maintain its turning capability. The J-10A and J-10B has no change in onboard guns being fired with a single barrel version of the MiG-21's gun, the GSH-23. The ammo count is unspecified according to most of my sources, but it must be around the MiG-21's ballpark of 200 rounds. The J-10A's initial anti-air ordnance would be the PL-8 all-aspect infrared air-to-air -air missile, the Chinese designation for the Israeli Python free air air-to-air missile. The J-10 should, they, should carry two of these as default and unlock all six at tier one. The next missile the J-10A could use is the SAR-H PL-11, essentially based on the Selena Aspide, itself based on the AIM-7 Sparrow, the J-10 should only carry two of these on the missile pylons as for a combination of two PL-11s and four PL-8s. The PL-11 could be a tier 3, and a tier 4 would be the PL-12 active radar homing missile. Like the PL-11, the J-10A should be balanced to carry only two PL-12s. For guided ordnance, the J-10A could have 250 kilograms and 500 kilograms general purpose bombs at tier 1 and 2, and the LT-2 Precision Guided Bomb and LS-6 Precision Guided Bomb at Tier 4. The J-10 could carry a minimum of... a maximum of 12 500 kilogram bombs, 2 bombs per pylon, and 4 guided bombs with, with a KJ-DC-01A targeting pod on the centerline pylon. The rockets, the standard Type 130-2 rocket, should be a Tier 2 module. KD-88 TV Guided Missile Tier 3. And the YJ-83 radar-guided anti-ship missile at Tier 4. But if we already have anti-radiation missiles by then, we could have the YJ-91 missile at Tier 3. The J-10 could have all the same armament, except it could use a PL-10 air-to-air -air missiles at Tier 4 as replacement for the PL-8 and remove the unguided rockets to fit the LS-6, LT-2, TG-500, and TG-1000 guided bombs in the KD-88 YJ-93, and YJ-91 ARM. Since these jets are extremely advanced in capability, with the PL-10 and PL-12 already at the AIM-9M and AIM-120 levels of capability, these two should come after at least another J-7 variant, perhaps the J-7G, and two variants of the J-8 or J-8 folder with a JF-17 after the folder. I know this is weird compared to USSR getting the MiG-29A early and Americans getting the F-16A very early, but the J-10A is extremely capable and that didn't fire all non-all aspect missiles, while the F-16A and MiG-29A had the AIM-9J and R-60 respectively. The J-10 would be something that is later tier 7 that just moved to tier 8 if it becomes a thing. The battle rating for the J-10A should be the same as the F-16C Block 30 in my old video at BR-14.7 maybe 15-0. With the J-10 be at 15-7 or 16-0, well, I believe that research of the very top end stuff should max out at 400,000 RP. I believe that so much aircraft after the J-70E would force the game to put the RP cost for the J-10 at 410,000 and 420,000 RP respectively. With 1,090,000 and 1,100,000 silver lines to purchase and 320,000 silver lines to crew respectively. Ah, the J-10. I wanted to show China some love as they've had a rough reception going in War Thunder. I love the untapped potential of Chinese vehicles being in War Thunder and I'd like to see more. There's so many vehicles, be it tanks or aircraft, from China that have a place in War Thunder and I feel like it's a shame we are missing out on a lot of them. Speaking of tanks, uh, I have a how to implement video regarding a tank that I have coming up and I'll try to hit two birds with one stone in that video. Once again, Gramercy. This is the Dr. MD. See you around.